to the lecture series of finite element analysis. This is Dr. Manoj Kumbalkar. In this lecture, we will learn about the numerical on 1D bar element. So, the numerical on 1D bar element is to determine the nodal displacement, stresses and reaction at support by finite element formulation for the step bar as shown in figure. So, uh, this is the step bar having two cross section. First is uh, first cross section is uh, 0 0.5 meter square area and second cross section having area of 1 meter square. Okay. So, uh, at the cent center of the first cross section the load is given and the length of both the cross sections is 2 meter. The modulus of elasticity given uh, for both the cross section is same that is 200 into 10 to power 3 newton per mm square. So, the so first step is to write down the given data of the uh, uh, given numerical. Okay. So, hereafter we will solve this numerical step by step as per the steps of FEM. So, uh, proceed with the steps of FEM. So, step number 1 is discretization. So, discretization of the body. So, in this uh, step bar, first of all we discretize the body into the number of parts that is we can say discretize, discretize the body into number of elements. Okay. So, uh, for the division of body into the number of elements, there are some conditions. First condition is divide the body from their cross section. Uh, as shown in figure, there are two cross section in the body. So, this body can be divided into the two parts. Okay. Second condition, check that where the force is applied in the body. So, uh, in this numerical, the force is applied at the center of the first cross section. So, it is necessary to divide that cross section from that force also. Okay. So, the first cross section will be divided into the two parts that is element number 1 and element number 2. Okay. So, element number 1 having the node number 1 and 2 and element number 2 having the node number 2 and 3. Okay. So, because the force is applied at the center of the first cross section, therefore, this cross section will be divided into the two parts that is two elements. Then uh, thereafter we will check uh, at the second cross section is there any force applied. So, no there is no any force applied at the second cross section. So, therefore, this complete cross section will be treated as element number 3. Okay. So, then uh, nodes of that element number 3 are uh, node number 3 and node number 4. So, there are total 3 elements in this numerical and total 4 nodes are available in this numerical. So, this is the discretization of the body. After discretization, we have to write the element connectivity table. So, you can write the element connectivity table in the form like this. Uh, first of all, the element numbers, then uh, global node numbers. So, global node numbers will be divided into the 2 nodes because uh, as we discussed in the earlier lecture also, each every elements in the 1D bar element having two nodes only. Okay? So, therefore, uh, that uh, each element will be divided into the two nodes. So, first element having node number 1 and 2, second element having node number 2 and 3 and third element having node number 3 and 4. Thereafter, the second step of FEM is to develop the element matrices whatever the number of elements available after discretization of the body, you have to prepare the elemental stiffness matrix for the each element. So, start with the element number 1 having node number 1 and 2. We can first of all write the equation for uh, stiffness matrix as we already uh, uh, derived in the previous lecture. So, k is nothing but k minus k minus k k or you can common that k. So, it will be 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. So, k is equals to stiffness is equals to area into the modulus of elasticity divided by its length that is a e by l. Okay? So, here area and length is different. So, therefore, a 1 into e divided by l 1. So, put the values of that uh, uh, terms that is area is 0 0.5 to 10 to the power 6, uh, modulus of elasticity is 200 to 10 to the power 6, 3 and uh, length is 1000. Okay. So, after calculating you will get the matrix 10 to power 8 in bracket 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. 
so you should write the node number for each element in the matrix so element number 1 having node number 1 and 2 so therefore write down the node number 1 2 above the matrix and uh, on the right side of the matrix so it is uh, uh, it will be used to assemble all the matrix in the global steepness matrix then for the element number 2 element number 2 having node number 2 and 3 so therefore you can uh, write the again same equation and put the values that k2 is equals to a2e divided by l2 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so again put the values you will get the matrix again same that is 10 to the power 8 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 for the node number 2 3 and 2 3 okay it is important to write uh, this uh, node number above and right side of the matrix then for element number 3 element number 3 having nodes 3 and 4 so with the help of the same equation again uh, by using the values of that uh, area of third cross third section and length of the third element so uh, the values put it put in the equation and uh, the solution will get it as same like this 10, 10 to the power 8 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and uh, write down the node number 3 4 and 3 4 okay so these are the elemental stiffness matrices for the each element so uh, after uh, this is the second step of finite element analysis to develop the element matrices okay so the third step of the finite element analysis is to assemble all the matrices all the elemental matrices so that is called as the global stiffness matrix so it is very important to add all the uh, stiffness matrix in the systematic manner so if your global stiffness matrix is correct then the solution for the displacement stresses and reaction will definitely go correct okay so uh, one note is that in 1d bar element numerical if total number of elements are 4 then global matrix will be 4 by 4 okay so this is the important note uh, that uh, for in the 1d numeric 1d bar element numerical the uh, whatever the number of uh, total number of elements are there the global stiffness matrix will be uh, that much number of elements okay like the total number of elements available in the numerical are 4 then the to then the global stiffness matrix will be 4 by 4 if the total number of elements available in the matrix in the numerical is 6 then the global stiffness matrix will be 6 by 6 okay so this is a simple uh, that observation uh, in the 1d bar element numerical so you can uh, here the total number of uh, nodes are 4 so you can just prepare the matrix as one 4 by 4 thereafter you can put the values of each element okay so first of all put the values of stiffness matrix number 1 that is k1 that uh, 10 raised to power 8 is common for all the three elements or the three values of the elements then uh, first will be 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 put as it is in the location of 1 1 1 2 uh, then 2 1 and 2 2 okay you just uh, thereafter thereafter just put the values of element number 2 okay the element number 2 having node number 2 3 and 2 3 so the first value will start from 2 2 location so the values are again 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so the first value with overlap with the last uh, with, uh, element or uh, last value of the first element okay so uh, just add that value at the location 2 2 so 1 plus 1 okay then second will be 3 at the location of 3 2 third will be at the location of 2 3 and rest uh, last will be at the location of 3 3 same for the element number 3 the first value of element number 3 will overlap with the last value of element number 2 that is 3 3 location so it add that value and write down the other values also the rest of the values which are blank here will be equals to 0 so write down the, at the blank position as 0 okay uh, if you sum all that uh, values uh, 1 plus 1 is 2 the global stiffness of matrix will be obtained as like this okay 
so this is the global steepness matrix this is the step number 3 of the finite element analysis step number 4 is apply boundary condition so apply what is the meaning of apply boundary condition it means what whatever the given data you have that is what uh, where the body is be, is fixed where the force is applied that is nothing but the boundary condition so at first we write down the write the global nodal displacement vector so there are total four nodes available here so therefore there will be four displacement and four forces will be there okay so uh, the displacement matrix will be 1 by 4 because there are four displacement so uh, displacement at node number 1 is u1 at node number 2 is u2 at node number 3 is u3 and at node number 4 will be u4 so at the body is fixed at node number 4 okay at the last uh, node it is uh, fixed so therefore the u4 will be equals to 0 and re rest of the uh, nodes are free okay so therefore we de there is need to calculate the values of u1 u2 and u3 so okay you got it then uh, st second step in the apply boundary condition is force vector or load vector so there are total uh, four uh, nodes available here so therefore the forces will be p1 p2 p3 and p4 okay now uh, you just check that where the force is uh, applied or where the force is given uh, you just check uh, at node number 1 is there any force applied no so therefore p1 is equals to 0 at node number 2 is there any force applied yes the force applied is 300 into 10 to the power 3 so therefore return it as here at node number 3 is there any force applied no so therefore it is zero and at node number 4 is there any force applied no but the uh, at node number 4 the body is fixed okay so therefore there will be reaction uh, r4 at node number 4 so there is a reaction will form at node number 4 because node 4 is fixed okay so at the last step where we have we there is need to find out the reaction we will use this equation again so uh, the next step of the finite element analysis is use the governing equations okay so therefore here we will use uh, the principle of minimum potential energy so as per the principle of minimum potential energy steepness into the displacement is equals to force so you have to write down the steepness matrices a global steepness matrix into the displacement matrix into the force matrix okay so here uh, we write as it is as per the previous uh, uh, global steepness matrix force matrix and displacement matrix as we already been written so uh, write in the form of equation so here we will get here we uh, written it as r4 uh, with uh, in place of zero because at node number 4 the reaction r4 will form and this complete equation will be useful to find out the reaction in the last step okay now uh, here after we uh, there is need to solve this um, complete matrix to find out the displacement that is u1 u2 and u3 so for that purpose we there is need to use the gauss elimination approach or gauss elimination technique so what the gauss uh, what uh, the gauss told okay so uh, elim uh, as per the gauss elimination eliminate row and respective column of global steepness matrix where displacement is zero okay so here at node number 4 the displacement is zero so therefore eliminate or delete that complete row okay so this is the uh, row number 4 so therefore also delete the respective row of global steepness matrix that is sorry respective column of the uh, global steepness matrix that is column number 4 okay so this is the uh, gauss elimination approach here after after deleting uh, the row and column the remaining term will be like this okay so with the help of this matrix now you can prepare the equations to find out u1 into u2 u3 like this to find out the displacement at each node so the next step is to find displacement at each node with respect to the previous uh, matrix so the we, we if we form this equation from the previous matrix will be uh, three equation will get uh, 10 to the power 
u1 minus u2 is equals to 0 then remaining two equations are like this ok. If you solve this equation with the help of your scientific calculator or manually you will get u1 is equals to 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 mm u2 is equals to 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 mm and u3 is equals to 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 mm. So, these are the displacement we calculated with the help of that principle of minimum potential energy ok. So, therefore, we can write this equation again in the form of a matrix as we get the values of that u1, u2 and u3 and u4 is already been 0. Then a uh, next step is after displacement there is a need to find out the stresses at each element. So, to find out the stresses at each element we use this equation that modulus of elasticity into that B is nothing but the strain matrix ok. The strain matrix is nothing but 1 by L in bracket minus 1 1 into the displacement matrix. So, displacement matrix will be for the particular element whatever we uh, whatever that element we form uh, we ca uh, calculating the stress. So, first of all the element number 1 for element number 1 if we calculate the stress for element number 1 that sigma 1 is equals to E into 1 by L 1 minus 1 1 in uh, bracket uh, sorry uh, in this matrix u 1 u 2. So, u 1 u 2 is uh, because of the element number 1 having node number 1 and 2. So, uh, if you put just first of all multiply that mat do both the matrices. So, therefore, minus u 1 plus u 2. So, you will get the equation like E divided by L 1 in bracket minus u 1 plus u 2. So, simply put put the all the values you will get the stress. So, the first uh, stress value is 0 Newton per mm square. So, similarly for the element number 2 and element number 3. So, sigma 2 will be E divided by L 2 you just uh, ch change the length uh, L 2 minus 1 1 in bracket. Now, here for the element number 2 nodes are u 2 and u 3 ok. So, again uh, multiply both the matrix first of all. The, so, therefore, minus u 2 plus u 3 multiply it with the E divided by L 2. So, by uh, putting all the values you will get the stress is minus 0 0.6 Newton per mm square ok. After that uh, for the element number 3 same process again same uh, calculation only change the displacement terms as u 3 and u 4 ok. So, just again put the values you will get the stre stress at element number 3 is minus 0 0.3 Newton per mm square. So, these are the stresses we calculated for all the element got it. So, this is the step number 7 and last step of the finite element analysis is to find out the reactions at suppose. So, in this numerical the body is fixed at the end. So, that is at node number 4 only. So, therefore, for to find out the reaction at node number 4 there is need to use the equation of principle of minimum potential energy. So, this equation we can use again. So, here at the last row you can get R 4. So, therefore, you can use last uh, uh, row multiply with the, uh, the complete displacement is equals to R 4. So, therefore, 10 raise to power 8. So, 0 into u 1 plus 0 into u 2 minus 1 into u 3 plus 1 into u 4 ok. So, therefore, minus u 3 because we remaining terms are 0. So, minus u 3 value is minus 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 plus u 4 that is 0 is equals to r 4. So, therefore, the value of r 4 is minus 300 into 10 to the power 3 newton ok. So, from the value of uh, reaction we can verify the solution of displacement and uh, stresses also because if summation of all reaction forces is equals to summation of applied or given forces then the solution is correct. So, in this numerical the force at node number 2 is given that is 300 Newton kilo Newton. So, the reaction uh, calculated and obtained it as minus 300 into 10 to the power 3 Newton. So, therefore, the complete numerical calculations are correct ok. So, uh, this is the numerical uh, this is the simple numerical of 1 d bar element. 
so if you have any questions about 1d bar element analysis so you can uh, write in the comment of this video and also if you satisfy with the video just click on the like button and uh, also subscribe the channel for more informative videos of finite element analysis so we will come with the next video again thank you thank you very much